Hi, I'm Rob from Hobbsine. Thanks for joining me for another video beer review. This time we've got four beers. Call it what you want. Versus, battle beers, whatever. But we've all got a set of four beers, all sub 4% ABV. All pale beers as well. So, in ABV order, we've got 2.8 North Monk's Dried in Edge, 3.2 Colonel Table Beer, uh, 3.8 Brewdog's Dead Pony Club, and then finally at the end, um, at 3.9 Magic Rocks um, Sorcery. So, going in ABV order, these are all, besides Colonel, pretty um, easily available. I mean, you can currently pick this up at Waitrose. Really good price as well. I think it's like two quid or something silly. A bit cheaper than I paid, which is no problem. Go support your local independent beer retailer. So it's going to be a, going to whistle through these. Not going to have the full breakdown that you're used to. But we'll skip through it. So super pale, kind of lemon curd beer. Pure white foam on top. Kind of looks like, does look like um, kind of lemon meringue pie in a glass in a lot of ways. Swirl and sniff. Yeah, it's lovely. I'm getting kind of like lovely light citrus, um, lemon, lime, pineapple, elderflower, gooseberry. So it's kind of like sh it's got a kind of a shat, si shat citric quality, but uh, also kind of sherbetty as well. Yeah, it's a lovely kind of light, vibrant aroma. So let's dive in. Cheers. Yeah, that's cracking. I do like this beer. Actually, I'm quite a fan of all of them. I've been a long time since I've had sorcery, actually. Flavour wise, it's got a quite a prominent kind of green and like a the flavour of the aroma of fresh hot pellets, if that makes any sense. Grapefruit, lime, there's a spritzy, sherbetty, could be heading towards Alka Seltzer kind of quality. Mm -mm -mm. Maybe a, a slight kind of orange cordial note in, in there as well, but definitely lemon sherbet. That's the main thing for me. So that is Striding Edge from Love Monk. I'm just going to move these a bit, just teetering a little bit. Give it a little setup. Holy cow! Bottle opener. Don't see them these very, very often on this channel, dear. So Colonel Table Beer, this one, it's a couple of months old, so I think it's fair enough. None of these being really that uber fresh, probably the Striding Edge with the freshest. Um, it's a couple of months old as this, but the hops in this one are Galaxy and Eldorado. That's classed itself as a pale ale, obviously the first one called itself a light IPA. So, I'll pour a bit more of this because Colonel is pot conditioned. That beer. Probably, when you think of low ABV beers, and especially table beers, Colonel being um, the kind of one of the originators, really. I mean, they kind of started it all. Beer in the glass, um, a little bit darker. We see it's a lot str bit stronger. Maybe a bit of kind of like pale crystal malt, not pale crystal malt, some maybe slight Munich, maybe a bit of caramel, something like that. A little bit more toasted malt character. Once again, pure white foam on top. Pretty hazy, but not massively. Um, aroma. I'd say a lot more dial back. It's yeah, it's, it's suffering a little bit from age. It's got a little bit of kind of like that kind of black tea note in there. It's okay. It's kind of bready, kind of orange Danish. Maybe it's just so different to that one. Yeah, I mean, it is a bottle. I mean, it's a funny thing, isn't it? I mean, this is probably two and a bit months old, um, which is still perfectly fine. Um, back in the day when Colonel started out, freshness wasn't. The kind of obsession with like uber freshness wasn't a major thing. Yeah, the aroma makes me think it's a little bit tired. Anyway, let's dive in. Cheers. First thing, softer body, maybe a bit lo lo a much lower carbonation. It's quite spritzy as an oven monk. With this, flavour-wise, more grapefruit, a drier, pithy 
quality lemon orange peel orange peel without a doubt it does have a little bit of bitterness which for a low ABV beer is not a bad thing you want to keep coming back for more grape grapefruit and then that pith I think that's what I'm going to say with that really different really different night and day it doesn't softer mouth feel it makes you think it is a little bit bigger I mean that's 2.8 is a northern monk it's pretty low ABV beer isn't it when you think about it so I'm just moving over, maneuvering the glasses around and next up I guess the most commonly found one Brewdog's Dead Pony Club bought from Tesco's so it's um once again I think it's fair that they're all not the most uber fresh packages of uh, these particular beers, so I think it's fair. It's a fair comparison, I'd like to think. So, Dead Pony class in itself is a session IPA. Colour wise, look at this. Absolutely night and day, isn't it? This one, much darker, pale bronze, um, pin bright. Head a lot more lethargic than the other two, so conditioning looks a little bit more uninspiring. Kind of looks a lot more traditional in a lot of senses. I mean, the other two beers, hazy, very pale. Maybe a bit of, I don't know what they're putting in this, maybe a bit of kind of like pale crystal. That's what I was thinking the other time. Maybe a bit of Munich, something with a bit of dark multi character. So, aroma. Quite an interesting one. It's got that very specific kind of brood of quality, which often smells like kind of like dissolved aspirin. Yeah, getting a little bit of toffee in there, kind of wet leaves. White, white, white grape and grapefruit. Gate, if you give. From appearances, aromas, if you give me this blind, I'd be thinking traditional, quite a traditional British brewery. The, the aroma takes you a little bit beyond that. A little bit of toasted marshmallow. But a kind of a dankish, kind of, as I was thinking, twiggy. It's a little bit twiggy, even though this is probably just all Simcoe and stuff. Maybe even a hint of bruised banana. Hmm, let's dive in, Cheers. Flavour-wise, fine. It's quite insipid. It's a bit nothing. Once again, it's got that kind of. It's quite and it's quite dry. Quite a little bit of grapefruit, but it's definitely got that kind of dank, <coughs> kind of like wet leaf kind of thing going on. I'm gonna say crystal malt. Once again, if you give me this, give me this blind, I'd be thinking it would be a, a in comparison to the others, a quite traditional British beer, British beer, which it clearly isn't, but very much supermarket fodder these days. It's not a bad thing. Kind of, I've enjoyed the a couple of these one uh, afternoon having a barbecue, but it's just a little bit, yeah, uninspiring. So, oh, I was nearly, nearly giving the game away. Actually, I'll leave that for a minute. I was gonna, I was gonna eliminate it. I was gonna eliminate it from the, from the proceedings. But I'm gonna go on with the last one. So once again, a classic itself, a session IPA. It's a sorcery from Magic Rock. Magic Rock, obviously, relatively recently um, bought by uh, Lion, who was ultimately owned by um, the company that own. Singer or something like that? Asahi? Is it something like that? Asahi, isn't it? But from all accounts, it's a brewery that keep their distance, a parent company that keep their distance. Barely last. It's really interesting. You mean um Nov Monk kind of bell of the ball at the moment. Um Colonel, old school old school craft, you mean originators. 
originators of the like London murky and all that malarkey. Um, Magic Rock always kind of stayed a bit closer to American style stuff. Uh, obviously, same with Brewdog. Supermarket beer, once again, this one. You can buy this one in um, Tesco's. So, a little bit of haze, but not much. Definitely going for the acceptance of kind of clear beer for the masses, really. So, pale, you could say it looks like a hazy lager in a lot of ways. So, aroma. <sighs> smells great, though. Yeah, it smells like fresh hot pellets. Kind of, yeah, once again, lemon, sh lemon sherbet. It's closer to like the North Monk is this. Quite floral, a bit soapy in that sense. Yeah, it smells a bit like it's, it's heading towards lush. Just a just a walk past the the door. Yeah, it's a bit it's a bit gassy in a in a way. But that's probably a bit of a ratty note from a kind of slightly musty hop. But grapefruit, lime, lime zest. Quite a simple aroma, but what's there is nice. So let's dive in. Cheers. Mmm. 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 Really quite bitter. Well, where I paused, um, there was something. It's really quite bitter. Straight away bitter. And long bitterness as well. Very dry. You can feel it in your tongue. Making your tongue feel furry. Really drying out your mouth. Mmm, kind of, uh, well, because these guys are really strict with a QC. I'm going to say it's over attenuated, but it's not. Funny one. Um, would it appeal to a, a general audience a bit more? Because it is really quite bitter. I mean, somebody who's, I guess, you're very used to bitter beers, but obviously a lot of beer that I drink is quite soft and sweet these days. So is that going against it a little bit? Once again, a really clean, crisp, um, kind of Jacob's Green Cracker biscuit malt, biscuit malt base. That's not the easiest thing to say when you're in your fourth beer in, thir in 15 minutes. I find it a little bit hard going because it's so bitter. Oh. Yeah, it's bitter as fuck. So, remember uh, the moment, start making some eliminations. I'm gonna, obviously this is the most recent one. It's kind of decent. I definitely prefer inhaler, inhaler, inhaler a little bit big, bigger. Unnecessarily bitter, I'd say that. Kind of virgin on astringent. Um, yeah, disappointing actually. I've not had one of them in a long time. Probably won't be visiting again at any time soon. Feels like old out does that. It's not a bad beer once again, but none of these are bad beers. But that's just too malty for me. It's that's really surprising. Um, this is the kind of beer that I mean, and this might be why they're going down this route. Um, um, the kind of people who rock up in brewed up bars don't drink craft beer apart from from supermarkets. Um, and they like something maltier. I think that would really appeal if you got some got a Saint Austell tribute or a um, semi for Taylor's landlord or something like that. You're drinking those kind of beers. I don't think you'd be that put off by. <coughs> excuse me, by. Um, dead pony. So, top of the class so far. Of monks riding edge, Colonel Table beer. Right then, the face off. <laughs> so first up, riding edge. Got a bit of a baked beans going on now. Don't love the aroma on that. That's lovely. And it's got a real kind of um, 
fruit pastel thing going on now. Aroma wise, I'd say this. Do you know what the second and best aroma? I'd say is the, not, is the Magic Rock actually aroma wise because the not, not Monk is, is not smelling that great now. Yeah, that's smelling funny, is that? Mmm. Anyway, taste test. That's where the most important bit, isn't it? I really like that. It packs in the flavour where you want it. It's a really brisk beer in a lot of ways. And tasty. I like that. Um, kernel table beer. Much lower ABV. I mean, much lower carbonation. Much fuller flavour. Much, much more complex. It's not that much bigger. 2.8, 3.2. Actually, so, leading the pack so far, I think it's only fair that we do, do it side by side. Dead Pony's not up to it. I know a lot of people love Dead Pony. Magic Rock. After that, the Magic Rock's not too bad. They, these seem closer in flavours. Um, but I'm going to say, I'm going to put that one. I've had a lot of Striding Edge recently because I've been a bit ill. So I, um, I've been drinking that and getting myself back into beer. I'm going to say, my champion, even if it's over two months old, knocking on three months old, is this bottle. It's Colonel Table Beer. As far as this guy's concerned, the best, relatively easy to get hold of. You'll get this in a, I mean, this fucking beer shop in most cities nowadays. Relatively easy to get hold of these days. Turtle Kernel Table Beer. That's my pick of the bunch club. Beer, craft beers available, sub 4%. Kernel Table Beer, 3.2. Lovely stuff. Anyway, I'm Rotten Mopsy. See you next time. Cheers.